let me ask you guys a question. Here's a question for you. So I go to uh, Maestro's. I'm having dinner there with Jen, and it's her birthday. And I, our waiter comes, and I'm talking to the waiter. I said, so tell me, uh, where are you from? He says, well, I, I grew up in San Diego, but I lived in San Francisco, and then now I'm over here. I said, oh, fantastic. I said, how do you like it in Florida? She says, yeah. It is what it is. She says, where are you from? I said, I lived in L.A. 20-some years. I lived in Dallas for five years, and I've been in Florida for one year. How do you like Florida? I said, I love it. What do you love about Florida? I said, policies, freedom, let me do what I want to do, low taxes, no taxes, okay. low regulation, lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. I said, I like that also about Texas, but it wasn't the lifestyle. He says, okay, walks away. Then he comes back. And I said, uh, let me ask you a crazy question here. He says, yes, yes. And he's, now he's quick with me. I said, is it <laughs> fair to say that uh, you lean more left than you do right? Yes, I do. I said, how do you handle it with your family? We have one rule that we follow. What's that? We don't talk politics. Oh. Just, we just don't talk politics. That's how we keep our families together. Yeah. So, so here's a – but you got to realize I, we've heard this for the longest time. You don't talk politics. You don't talk religion. You don't talk this when you're doing business or with your family. Isn't that a way of copping out and not willing to have the tough conversation that you need to have? What are your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. I mean, those should actually be the conversations that you that happen first and foremost around the family dinner table. I mean, that's that's the actual real safe space is is for parents to talk about these issues with their children, for children to be able to ask questions and not think about the ramifications that might happen in the classroom or with their friends, but to ask their parents the awkward questions that they might have. I mean, this is this is something, of course, that's lost. I mean, th this goes back to the whole deeper issue of the nuclear family, right? Because parents should be indoctrinating their children. They should be passing on their values, their principles, yeah. their religious views, their politics yeah. to their children. And then when their children are adults, then you can say, okay, do I want to continue as an adult in following these these values that I was taught? But yeah, I mean, students students in school, in college, it's actually shocking sometimes what they don't know because they haven't heard anything except for what Tom was saying, that speech is violence if the mm -hmm. speech offends someone. Well, Liz, if, if trans is the number one issue that they bring up, what's number two, three, four? Oh, what, what do youth care about? The youth, the Gen Z. My youngest sister is uh, 19. She's in college. So. Well, she's right at that age. She is right at that age, yeah. yeah they care. I mean, they care about... They don't care about fiscal issues because they don't. Well, they don't understand. have any money. They're not working. So no, it's not started yet. And, and yeah. it's really yeah. interesting too if you think or about the government like, just gave you two trillion dollars in checks. It's going to happen mm -hmm. somehow, and is I it, don't have to worry about it. Is it climate change? Is it? Uh, They're very fearful of climate change. One thing I think is interesting to note, though, is we are setting up their generation for this incredible financial failure. Not even because of all the spending, which is obvious, but because of how we're teaching them fiscal irresponsibility with college. So we send them off to college and these colleges cost 20, 30, 40, mm -hmm. $50,000 a year. They come out at 22 years old with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And yet then we tell them, yeah. don't, don't spend what you don't have live, mm -hmm. live within your means. And this is just completely opposite of how we've culturally forced them to go to these institutions in order to be successful. Uh, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, let me talk about the climate change thing for a second. There are a significant number of Gen Zers who actually suffer clinical anxiety and insomnia. They have sleep problems because they're worried about climate change, because they believe the folks that say, oh, the earth is going to be 12 years. Yeah, the 11, the AOC, 11 years and the mm -hmm. earth is totally gone. Well, uh, when you hear that and you're only 18 years old and for your entire life, you're thinking you're going to be dead in 10 years. Wouldn't you also have the same nerve wracking situation going on if, if you're 17, 18, 19 years old? And that's all you've ever known. If it's all I've ever known, sure. But, I mean, that goes back to, I mean, that's why Pat does what he does. That's why I do what I do, because there needs to be a, a counter-narrative of reality. These, these kids want to hear the truth. That's the thing. They want to hear what's real. They are hungry for facts. They are hungry for knowledge. They've just only been fed one side of it, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, my independent venture, Pat's independent venture, are very successful, because people actually do really, really want to hear um the facts of what's going on. So, I mean, there shouldn't be a 17-year-old or an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old in our country who's only heard that the earth is going to end in 11 years and that they shouldn't have children and that we should ban airplanes and red meat. They should say, oh, I hear that from one side. The other side says this. Now let me think right. for myself. You know, well, whenever I watch Tom talk to his kids, he's always talking issues with his kids, always talking. He'd read this article, read that article. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? They're always going back and forth, right? And they'll send the notes to him and he'll show it to me. Look what Bailey just said. Look what Brooke just said. Look how she processed this, right? 
Remember when we had RFK on uh, first time around when we uh, uh, Kennedy? I asked him a question. I said, "So, tell me about some of the Kennedy traditions. What are some of the Kennedy traditions that you guys have?" He says, "Every night at the dinner table, our our father he would start a debate. He would say, what do you think about drugs? Why are they bad?'" I said, "Your dad would say about drugs. He says, yeah.' He says, "Why are drugs bad to use?" So you got to be kidding me. He says, "No." <laughs> then he would say, "What's wrong with me using drugs?" What's wrong with me drinking as much as I want? What's wrong with rich people? Are rich people greedy? He said it was constantly debate, constantly debate. I put the fault of this, and this is not going to, you know, some people are not going to be happy about this. When kids are panicking about climate change, you know whose responsibility that is. The head of the household, they don't have these conversations with them, okay? The head of the household needs to... In today's climate, if you really want to raise your kids to be strong leaders today, the head of the household has to be very aware of what's going on and be willing to have these conversations with them. Because if you don't and they go, you're essentially handing your kids over to teachers to raise them with a mindset that they want to raise them rather than you. Yeah, you're going to say work hard, do this, be a good person, go to church, whatever some of the things parents say. But you got to get a little bit deeper. I think these conversations need to happen at but the But what, what happens when you when you teach your kids what you want and as Liz say, you indoctrinate them into your values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you send them off for four years and they come back completely different and their values have but, done a complete 180. But I'm not indoctrinating in my – specifically in my uh, uh, values. I'm indoctrinating in a way of processing issues, not necessarily values. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you what are my, my values and principles. Here's what we live by. The David family lives by lead, respect, improve, love. We don't bully. We don't get bullied. We pray for courage, wisdom, tolerance, understanding. This is what we do as a family. This is what I encourage you to do. But you, you ask the why question. Why do you, like this morning, Dylan, he's reading a book. He comes up to me. He's reading a World Cup book. And in the World Cup book, he reads about a story of Hitler that in 1933 World Cup, 1932, whatever the World Cup was, Hitler's aspiration was to be like Mussolini. He says, Dad, do you realize what this Hitler, every book I'm reading about Hitler is terrible. I said, what do you think about this guy? To Dad, this, this guy's a terrible guy if he did this. I said, why don't you go figure out why he hated Jews so much? He said, I should go figure out. I said, go research it. Find out for yourself and tell me. But it's not saying, you know, you're, you're feeding and then saying go find out and then come back. I'm teaching you to go find out for mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah, it's critical not, thinking. Yeah, you're teaching this. You're not teaching... This is the way we are, and that's it. No, you, you're, you're going to have a kid fight you later on. Okay, You're teaching them how to mm-hmm. process issues. So if you enjoyed this little segment from the podcast, click over here to watch the entire podcast. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Take care, everybody.